we could have the dog was attracted to his tail. So we went, saw his trail and thought, oh, I'm attracted to that. What is it? Or attracted by something that was flying around near his tail. Or we could say he was startled by his tail. So we're going to write startled. I could put a couple of ideas there, letting them know I may use both or maybe I'll just use one of those verbs when I plan my sentence. It's just a bank for me to use because when I look at all the words on my vocab wall, many times it's difficult as I'm writing just to pull a word out. So if I make a bank of words, it's much easier when I go to form my sentences. So now we have the dog was startled by the tail. That sounds pretty good. Let's go to the second box. What's the most important thing in this box? The dog again, but what on the dog is important? Let's get a little bit more detailed. Ooh, his tail. We're going to look at describing his tail. On your page, you'll notice that we had the word tantalizing. So we chose tantalizing to describe his tail. Finally, in the last box, Who's the most important? What noun is the most important noun in this last box? The dog. What vocabulary words do we want to have? We could have a adjective to describe the noun. We could have a verb and you could have both. You can put both adjectives and verbs here. We went to the adjectives and felt that there really weren't any that we could add here, but we went to the verbs and found the word collapsed. So we added collapsed to this picture. When you're looking at your vocab wall, sometimes there will be vocabulary words that you can insert, sometimes there won't be. One other trick that I'd like to show you is this. When we identified the dog as the important part, the important noun in this beginning box, if you want to add adjectives, then say to the children, what kind of, and then put the noun there dog and then put it in the context of the sentence. That way when you're trying to look for an adjective to see if one on your list will match, you'll actually be able to help the students see do any of these adjectives match in this sentence? Will they add to the context of this story? So I may say, oh we're talking about the dog here. What kind of dog and what was this dog doing? He was noticing his tail. He was all excited because he saw this big fluffy thing wagging at the end of his body. I don't think he knew what this fluffy thing was. So he noticed this fluffy thing wagging behind him. So what kind of dog would notice and be attracted and think that there was something behind him wagging back and forth, not thinking it was his tail. So let's say that we had a vocabulary word like silly, crazy, wild. Maybe that might be a word that the students could use. But we didn't really have dangerous, archaic, melancholy, delightful. Those words aren't going to match. And we want to also model that. Oh, that won't, mo that won't work. Those words won't work. Those adjectives won't work. They don't make sense in the context of this story. The reason why we want to do that is children sometimes choose words just because they're there. They're not thinking about the meaning and the precision of the word, that it has to be precise and it has to make sense in the context of that sentence or story. You want to get to the verb. So when you identify the noun, you're going to say action. What did the dog do when he saw his tail in this circle, in this middle box? in this ending box. Do we have any verbs that describe that action? Day one is all about looking at the pictures, just talking about what's happening in each one so that we have a basic idea about the ideas and have a sequence of actions. After we look at the pictures and talk about them, then we go to our vocab wall. We go to the beginning box. What's the most important noun in the beginning box? The dog. What kind of dog would notice his tail and think it was something odd. And we would add an adjective if there was a matching adjective that made sense for that box. Then we would go and add a verb. What would a dog do if he saw his tail and was all excited about it? What action could I use that would fit in this sentence? In the middle box, we decided the noun was the tail. So we asked what kind of tail would a dog start to chase? Maybe a fluffy, big, wagging tail. What action did, notice the past tense,
the dog do when he saw the tail? Do we have any verbs that I can use to tell that action? And then the last box, who's the most important part of this end of the story? The dog. What action in this box did this dog do? He collapsed. And that was up on our verb wall. We were able to use that one. When you're adding adjectives and verbs, either one or the other or both to the boxes, you want to primarily start with just the vocabulary wall. But you will notice as you do this activity, students will also be able to retrieve their own adjectives and verbs. Great! Add those to the beginning, middle, and end box. So we have day one, tell the story, add the vocabulary. Now let's move on to day two. On day two, remember, 10 minutes a day, you're going to go through each one of these boxes and you will use the beginning secret formula, middle, and end secret formulas in order to translate the picture into sophisticated sentences filled with robust vocabulary. In the beginning box, we have S, C, arrow as our secret formula. And what we're going to do is we're going to look up at the picture and we're going to say S, setting, time and place. When and where is this story happening? Always start with when. If you have the where, when phrases in that order, sometimes it doesn't make sense, but when, where will always make sense. So on our picture, what we did was we said, oh, it's happening at night. So notice we drew a moon with some stars just to show it's late at night. Then the next thing we did was ask, where is this happening? And we have our house. The setting at the beginning of the story is the big setting. You don't want to say, on the sofa, on the rug. You want to give the big setting because it's the beginning of a story. So we had one night at my house. We go to the C, the character. We look at the picture and we say, who is doing the action in this picture? My dog. In this case, notice I'm saying my house, my dog. I could say at home, the dog, or in this case, I'm using my dog. I'm telling children that we're going to pretend that this is our dog and we're telling something that happened with our dog, kind of like a personal narrative. So we have one night at my house, my dog, and then we have our arrow, action. What did your dog do late at night at your house? We're going to see we had our verb there. We could say was startled when he saw his tail or was startled by his tail. Or we could say was attracted to his tail. After using pictures or keywords to fill in the SC arrow, go back and rehearse the sentence using physical motion. So maybe we'll put a moon up. Late one night at my house, my dog was attracted by his tail. Was attracted to his tail. Ah, now we go back, we say the sentence over and over again. Maybe I could add another word. Late one night, down at my house, my dog was startled, then attracted by his tail. Once we decide how we're going to say the sentence, then we'll add fancy words. That's your salt and pepper shaker filled with some colorful beads that you shake to say add fancy words. So notice we said the sentence, we practiced it, then we'll go back and say, what kind of house? Cozy, warm house. And remember, what kind of house would my dog be in? Oh, it's a cozy, warm house. What kind of dog would be attracted to his tail? He's a crazy, a silly dog. What kind of tail would my dog be attracted to? Long, fluffy. And then what we do is we're recording words underneath the pictures. So we have a movie script, story opening, SC arrow, setting character action, setting, when is the story happening, where is it happening, character, who's doing the action, action, what did the character do? And then we're filling in from that first picture simple icons to translate that picture into a sentence. After we practice rehearsing the sentence using physical motions, we go back and add fancy words. We record a bank of fancy words there that we can retrieve as we form the sentence again. So now we'll go back and try again. Late one night, 
down at my warm, cozy house, my playful dog was attracted to his long, fluffy tail. Was startled, but attracted to his long, fluffy tail. So you go back and you add these different words and you say them over and over again. Let's go to the middle of the story. So now that we have our beginning and we set it, then we go to the middle picture and we go like this. What happened next after my dog was attracted to his tail? So notice I'm putting this in the past tense, but the question I'm asking is what I want children to learn in order to sequence in their own stories the actions so they stay on topic. And that is, what happened next? What happened next after my dog was attracted to his long fluffy tail? Notice I use the word after and then I use the context of this beginning sentence where he was attracted to his tail. This way children know he's attracted to the tail. Now I need to tell the very next action. It's a fabulous technique to give them the metacognitive language and questioning they need to ask themselves as they go from one action to the next action in their own stories. So we have our beginning. Now we go to the middle. We ask that question. They look at the box and they'll have the secret formula TC arrow. When you look at TC arrow, T is for transition. Special words that move us from one action to the next action. The C is character. Who's doing the action? And the arrow is action. What did that character do? When we look at TC arrow, the first part of the secret formula that we will fill in is going to be the C character. So we go back and say, who's doing the action up in this middle box? The dog, my dog, woo, 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 redundant police, redundant police. You don't want to keep using the same important words. My dog, my dog, my dog. My dog's a boy. What's another word I can use? So we don't want to have redundant words. And many times nouns can be redundant. Kids will say dog, 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 dog. So you want to show them. You could use a pronoun. So in this case, the subject pronoun, because my dog is a boy, we can use he. You can also use a proper noun. Now a proper noun is the name, uh, and in this case, the name of the dog. But we didn't introduce the dog at the beginning of the story with his name. And if you're going to use a proper noun, most of the time you should have that at the beginning of the story. You can also use a synonym. So that's going to be a word that would mean dog. So my buddy, my pet, my pup, you want to use a synonym that's going to still have that same meaning. You don't want to say my canine. Canine doesn't have that cute little fuzzy feeling. That's not going to be a noun that's precise. So when we're going back and looking at character and I ask, character, who's doing the action up in our picture? And the kids say, my dog. Then we'll say, redundant police, redundant police. Good writers don't use the same important words. I can't keep saying my dog, my dog. Let's use a subject pronoun. My dog is a boy, he. So now we'll write he underneath the character. Action, look at the picture. What did my dog do in this picture? He chased his tail. So we have our tail here and we write the word chased. Around and around in a circle. Ooh, tantalizing. Remember we had tantalizing up there? Let's put that next to the tail. So he chased his tantalizing tail around and around in a circle. After determining the character and action in our sentence, then we can add a transition. In this case, we told a how transition. How did my dog chase his tail? Suddenly, quickly. Notice I have not just how, I also am telling you when. Before I knew what was happening, my dog chased his tail around and around in a circle. 